Atlantic Puffin The Atlantic Puffin, Fraticula arctica, also known as the common puffin, is a species of seabird in the orc family. It is the only puffin native to the Atlantic Ocean. Two related species, the tufted puffin and the horned puffin, are found in the northeastern Pacific. The Atlantic puffin breeds in Iceland, Norway, Greenland, Newfoundland, Nova Scotia and the Faroe Islands, and as far south as Maine in the west and parts of Great Britain in the east. The Atlantic puffin is most commonly found on the Westman Islands, Iceland. Although it has a large population and a wide range, the species has declined rapidly, at least in parts of its range, resulting in it being rated as vulnerable by the IUCN. On land, it has the typical upright stance of an orc. At sea, it swims on the surface and feeds mainly on small fish, which it catches by diving underwater, using its wings for propulsion. This puffin has a black crown and back, pale grey cheek patches and white underparts. Its broad, boldly marked red and black beak and orange legs contrast with its plumage. It molts while at sea in the winter and some of the bright colored facial characteristics are lost, with color returning again during the spring. The external appearance of the adult male and female are identical, though the male is usually slightly larger. The juvenile has similar plumage, but its cheek patches are dark gray. The juvenile does not have brightly colored head ornamentation, its bill is narrower and is dark gray with a yellowish-brown tip, and its legs and feet are also dark. Puffins from northern populations are typically larger than in the south and these populations are generally considered a different subspecies. Spending the autumn and winter in the open ocean of the cold northern seas, the Atlantic puffin returns to coastal areas at the start of the breeding season in late spring. It nests in clifftop colonies, digging a burrow in which a single white egg is laid. The chick mostly feeds on whole fish and grows rapidly. After about six weeks, it is fully fledged and makes its way at night to the sea. It swims away from the shore and does not return to land for several years. Colonies are mostly on islands with no terrestrial predators, but adult birds and newly fledged chicks are at risk of attacks from the air by gulls and skewers. Sometimes, a bird such as an arctic skewer will harass a puffin arriving with a beakful of fish, causing it to drop its catch. The striking appearance, large colorful bill, waddling gait, and behavior of this bird have given rise to nicknames such as, clown of the sea, and, sea parrot. It is the official bird symbol for the Canadian province of Newfoundland and Labrador. In 2015, the International Union for Conservation of Nature changed its status from, least concern, to, vulnerable. In 2018, BirdLife International reported that the Atlantic puffin was threatened with extinction. Description The Atlantic puffin is sturdily built with a thick set neck and short wings and tail. It is 28 to 30 centimeters in length from the tip of its stout bill to its blunt-ended tail. Its wingspan is 47 to 63 centimeters and on land it stands about 20 centimeters high. The male is generally slightly larger than the female, but they are colored alike. The forehead, crown, and nape are glossy black, as are the back, wings, and tail. A broad, black collar extends around the neck and throat. On each side of the head is a large, lozenge-shaped area of very pale gray. These face patches taper to a point and nearly meet at the back of the neck. The shape of the head creates a crease extending from the eye to the hindmost point of each patch, giving the appearance of a gray streak. The eye looks almost triangular in shape because of a small, peaked area of horny blue-gray skin above it and a rectangular patch below. The irises are brown or very dark blue and each has red orbital ring. The underparts of the bird, the breast, belly and under tail coverts, are white. By the end of the breeding season, the black plumage may have lost its shine or even taken on a slightly brown tinge. The legs are short and set well back on the body, giving the bird its upright stance when on land. Both legs and large webbed feet are bright orange, contrasting with the sharp, black claws. The beak is very distinctive. From the side, the beak is broad and triangular, but viewed from above, it is narrow. The half near the tip is orange-red and the half near to the head is slate-gray. A yellow, chevron-shaped ridge separates the two parts, with a yellow, fleshy strip at the base of the bill. At the joint of the two mandibles is a yellow, wrinkled rosette. The exact proportions of the beak vary with the age of the bird. In an immature individual, the beak has reached its full length, but it is not as broad as that of an adult. With time the bill deepens, the upper edge curves, and a kink develops at its base. As the bird ages, one or more grooves may form on the red portion. The bird has a powerful bite. The characteristic bright orange bill plates and other facial characteristics develop in the spring. 
At the close of the breeding season, these special coatings and appendages are shed in a partial molt. This makes the beak appear less broad, the tip less bright, and the base darker gray. The eye ornaments are shed and the eyes appear round. At the same time, the feathers of the head and neck are replaced and the face becomes darker. This winter plumage is seldom seen by humans because when they have left their chicks, the birds head out to sea and do not return to land until the next breeding season. The juvenile bird is similar to the adult in plumage, but altogether duller with a much darker grey face and yellowish-brown beak tip and legs. After fledging, it makes its way to the water and heads out to sea and does not return to land for several years. In the interim, each year, it will have a broader bill, paler face patches, and brighter legs and beak. The Atlantic Puffin has a direct flight, typically 10 meters above the sea surface and higher over the water than most other orcs. It mostly moves by paddling along efficiently with its webbed feet and seldom takes to the air. It is typically silent at sea, except for the soft purring sounds it sometimes makes in flight. At the breeding colony, it is quiet above ground, but in its burrow makes a growling sound somewhat resembling a chainsaw being revved up. Thanks for watching. If you enjoy the video please like and subscribe.